Coming up, an interview with a mysterious band who haunted the first half of the 80s with four hits, including a 1983 number one that is so exotic, so strange, it defies meaning. I actually waited for years to find out the stories behind their hits, and we actually demystify them next with two original members, including the singer, and we find out why this iconic group just disappeared from music for 22 years. Story is coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember playing board games with your family, Trivial Pursuit, the game of life. You'll dig this channel of pure musical nostalgia. Make sure that you subscribe below right now to be a part of this community. Click the bell so you don't miss out on any of our latest interviews. Also check us out on Patreon for even more content. Well, it's time for another edition of our show, Revelations. Of course, where featured artists share rare stories uh, behind the scenes of their greatest songs and greatest albums. Insight you truly won't find anywhere else. Today is one that I've waited a long time to do, a band I've waited a long time to sit down with. First of all, when I was a, a young kid, about six or seven, I heard this band on the radio for the first time. They had two songs that were played all the time on radio, at least in that moment for me. And these two songs, they were so haunting, so evocative, so mysterious, that I was pulled in by their stirring strangeness, if you will their otherworldly charm. They were a band that matched their name. Dark, vampy, mystical, transient even, cryptic. Talking about the motels. The motels, man, they were a new wave institution in the 80s. Of course, led by their esoteric vocalist, their lead singer, Martha Davis. This band, it kind of seemed to come out of nowhere. You know, from the underground, they attacked the charts. Um, first, they did it with their number nine smash, Only the Lonely. And then they hit number one a year later on the rock charts and sped up the pop charts with their perplexing new wave hit, Suddenly Last Summer, which is going to be today's focus. I remember being completely mesmerized by their music especially uh, the truly spooky song, Celia. This is where Martha Davis did the unthinkable for a female singer back then. She dropped the F-bomb about a jealous boyfriend who's so far gone he's about to come unglued and cut his beautiful girlfriend's face up. Oh, I mean, this was not your fun 80s pop princess. This was a singer with grit and realness. Martha Davis pulled you in as listeners and showed you the whole story. No holes barred. I was always transfixed by her female Doors meets seedy Los Angeles vamp that made them one of the most underappreciated and really misunderstood bands of the time. Oh, girl, you was looking so good. And then after the mid 80s, this band pretty much vanished from the radio. So up next, Martha Davis and original band member Marty Gerard, uh, they're going to demystify uh, this band, if that's possible, and their biggest hit. Now, as we go into the story, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eye, where the glasses I wear every single day. Love them. You can get a pair for every day of the week because they're so cost effective, so quality. I'm telling you, you'll be a customer for life. Just click up here on our info button. Pick out a few pair and see how you look before you buy. They have an amazing mirror feature where you can do that, and you'll get to 80% off regular retail prices. Check it out here. Here's the motels. It happened one time. This is a time where you're still kind of riding high, and, and suddenly last summer, another top 10 hit for you guys went to number nine. Tell me about suddenly last summer, because that was, again, very eerie, and for that to be a top 10 hit yeah. is so cool. I'll start this because I remember I lived a couple miles. We both lived in the San Fernando Valley. I lived a couple miles away. And I would say it was like two in the morning. I get a phone call and Martha goes, listen to this. And it was coming through the phone. It was like, <laughs> and I go, and I meant it. I go, that's definitely a hit. Click. <laughs> you know, I could tell over the phone. I, I mean, wow. 
I didn't mean it was one. I meant it, it's <laughs> going to be one. It was just, and I, I wasn't there. Martha had, you take it from there. Well, suddenly last summer is really weird because I mean, all songs are an amalgamation of, you know, and it's, there's a lot of time that goes into that, that thing. But this one, I know for a fact, I, I can sort of trace its roots and it was years. Because the initial like sort of sensation of Suddenly Last Summer was in Berkeley, California, and I was sitting in my backyard, and it was a beautiful summer. It was late summer, and it was warm, and it was beautiful, and I was sitting on the grass, and all of a sudden, this wind picks up, and it's that cold wind. You know, autumn is coming. You're feeling, you, it was just the change of the season. I could feel it, and then I heard the ice cream truck. And I said, that's the last time I'm gonna hear the ice cream truck this year. And there was such melancholy to it. And that I think was hearkening back to me being a 14 year old girl being pregnant, knowing that well, I could never go, I wasn't going back to school the next year. I wasn't, you know, so there was this, this, this thing about, um, this is definitely different. And from here on, everything's going to, and I Be can't different. go back. Change. Yeah. Can't and go home again. I can't go home like again. Like Thomas Wolfe. Yeah. Because it's like when you go back somewhere where you had a phenomenal memory yeah. of something that happened, and you try to go back and relive it, and it's never going to happen. The only thing that can really do that is music. A place for a moment. And suddenly last summer, the lyrics are, they're pretty simple, but it's atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It happened one summer, it happened one time, happened forever for a short time, place for a moment, an end to a dream, forever I loved you, forever it seemed. Forever it seemed. I was singing it one day and my grandma said, you know, that's a movie. I know. <laughs> and I said, really? She said, yeah, it's Elizabeth Taylor. And, and so I went out and rented the movie thinking that, well, maybe the motels are in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah, and I had but, never seen the movie. I had yeah. heard the title and I just. Because it's like, cool. Suddenly yeah. last summer. It almost sounds like a paperback, right? Yeah. That was the number one hit on the rock charts. It was? Yeah. So you know more about this charts. than we do. <laughs> it was number one on the rock charts. Like chart toppers. I know. And Weird. it was number 18 on the dance charts. And of course, dance? number nine. Is, I know. What? How can you dance to Suddenly Last Summer? <laughs> well, it's probably that alternative dance. Maybe that, you know, so. It's what you're creating there in the guitar solo. The da -na -na, na -na -na, yeah. na -na. Just yeah. takes you, transports you to like a, a different dimension almost. Yeah. It's you extremely know? atmospheric. And I think in terms of recording, it's like that's the height of the, the pop production, I think. that. We had only the and lonely in that. We that's have to give the props to Stephen Goldstein, who's no longer yeah. with us for that beautiful descending line. Goldie was great. He was like Val's sort of right hand guy. And, and uh, I remember getting up when he, he came up with that, I just sort of get cut on my knees and went, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. It is cinematic. It is. He's using the Sopranos, right? Maybe he'll be right back. One sugar, right? Suddenly last summer made it in Breaking Bad. I mean, that was probably <laughs> I know. I know. so cool. I know, and I didn't know because I was, I don't watch a lot of television. But then somebody said, you know, Suddenly Last Summer was in that. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, so, yeah. That, Were you able to go back and, and see it? I don't think I did. <laughs> yeah. But, Okay, this is me and television. I have a television in the living room, which just, I mean, I haven't had a television <laughs> in the living room forever. I have one of those antennas you buy at Walmart and it gets one channel really well, which is really lucky for me because it's eye on television. Yeah. And my favorite show is Criminal Minds. So I just watch, you know, if I'm gonna watch TV, I turn it on and watch reruns of Law and Order and Criminal Minds and that's it. Well, they should in Criminal Minds. They probably they, should. They wait, would, until, wait until you hear the new album. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, just a beautiful song. It's so melancholy, but yeah. so beautiful at the same yeah. time.
we walked. The thing about Only the Lonely, I'm excited we're at this part because I've, <laughs> I've waited many, many decades to ask you this question since I was a kid and heard it the first time. Where did that song come from? Did it just like fall out of the sky or did it like, yeah. This was, yeah, it was the one I picked up my guitar and it was sitting there. Nothing actually comes from the sky, but it is. <laughs> um, I do look up sometimes and go, thank you. <laughs> you feel like it's come from the sky. Obviously, I think that emotionally, you know, here we were finally, we were, we're now signed. We've been on world tours. People are taking us around in limos and bringing us flowers. and You're traveling around the world. Yeah, and... it's like there's this whole... Only the lonely can play. I was desperately lonely and unhappy, and yet here we were. You know, this it was like a facade. Only the lonely can play. And the loneliness was probably deeper than anything else. Yeah. It's amplified by the fact that you're supposedly, you know, so... Successful yeah. and happy. Yeah, and, and people are loving you. So, and you know, one line in the... I'm so lonely way up here. I feel so lonely, way up. Remember that Elvis quote, I love that, that he says, I feel alone in a crowded room or yeah. whatever the exact quote he said when he was at the peak of his fame. It's a lonely man. You're at a point where they're kind of trying to make you something that you don't want to be. And art comes from your soul. Yeah. Whenever that happens and you're right in the middle of art and commerce, the record label's always trying to push you over to the commerce side yeah. and you yeah. lose yourself a little bit. And more than more than just in a, like Val, when he took over, he basically was trying to fire my whole band and put in his guys. It was hugely demoralizing for the band itself. Um, Brian basically didn't play on it. Marty played on it, but Goldie was coming up with most of the parts and. Well, I came up with the only the lonely thing. Yeah. I am not a session musician. I mean, I'm pretty good now, but like I grew up playing in bar band. None of us were. We right. were good. <laughs> and, and so the way when everything's on beat, it, it, the song relaxes and becomes the definitive recording. And if you don't have those skills and the fact that, you know, I wasn't much of a drinker, I'll put it that way. <laughs> but... I know what I contributed to that uh, artistically and sonically. And other but albums. like Michael Goodrow, the bass player, literally had to fight for his seat as yeah. the bass player. And he literally would not get out of his chair. Yeah. He went home every night and, re and practiced. And, and the ringer that Val brought in just, you know, Michael won. That was, <laughs> but that's, that's demoralizing to a band. That, yeah is a band. It seemed like even as a kid hearing only the lonely it was a contradiction of the two worlds that you guys are talking yeah, about, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you're in a machine that, you know, there's there's so many levels where you have to be happy. First of all, a band is a hilarious thing because it's like being married to four people, five people. Literally. You're with them more and than you're you are your family. With them all the time. And the motels, the the basis of the motels, Marty, Michael, Brian and and myself, we all actually got along famously. Yeah. There was never a problem. The guitar players came and went, and I'm not sure that that fit ever got right with that motels. Um, I think it is now. So you're dealing with that, and then you've got the machine and the record company and all those people, all the press and all that stuff that you have to, you know, your image that you have to. You're right. Um, there's so many things that have to be satisfied at the same time. The one thing that probably doesn't get satisfied is you. It's like I told you, only the lonely can play. I want to go through some of the lyrics because I just love this poetry and I want the world to go back and listen to the song <laughs> and feel it the way, hopefully, that, that I felt and so many people felt it. We walk the lonely smile, we smile without any style, we kiss all together wrong, no intention. I love, oh man, <laughs> that is just great poetry. But the part that spoke to me was like, we lie about each other's dreams. We lie about each other's dreams. We live. We live without each other thinking what anyone would do without me and you. Anyone. 
because we're all built to be a little bit selfish. Uh -huh. And we all think that, well, if I don't go into work today, or if I don't go to school today, the day never happened, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. right? And uh -huh. that spoke to me as a kid, like, <laughs> well, for the first time in my life, I realized that the world doesn't evolve around me, and this song is kind of saying this is an idea. It made me think about it where I'd never thought of it before. Huh. I never really thought about the lyrics the way you did. I'm trying to, I mean, I had a I different job. I don't think I did either. <laughs> yeah. It's a great line, though, because yeah. it's, it's... Well, we I mean, we them. all take songs the way we take it, right? Yeah. That's what's beautiful yeah. about music. And, and I tend to love to write lyrics that don't paint the whole picture. I don't go into a lot of detail. I leave it very open because it's like the difference between reading a book and going to the movies. Right. In the book, you color their hair, you make their, uh, you know, you yeah. create the characters. I remember reading One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and being totally like, wait a minute, that's, that's not McMurphy. That's like, you know, he did yeah. a great job, but you know, you have your own vision of it and of that's what? how it should be. So hold on. Here we go. Hold the lyrics were one thing, but even the music in the background though. But, Da, 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 well, yeah, da, that was a guitar riff, you know? but it's her riff. Right when you hear that song and you hear the drums come in and then the bass, like it's just, what I love about it is you can hear those parts so distinctly. We lie about each it's almost like there were three or four melodies going on yeah. in that. And so it's taking you through all these different tunnels. When you get to that breakdown and you hear the guitar solo uh -huh. and the saxophone solo, that's like the best one-two combo, one of the best <laughs> of the 80s. Tell me about that part, because I've oh, that's my favorite saxophone solo of, uh, well, thank uh, you. of the 80s. I was noodling away on my tenor, you know, playing buttons and bows or whatever came yeah. in my head. Yeah. You know, everything I ever, I was just, it wasn't very good. Um, and then we cut it in half, and then it was put in a different key, and then I put it on alto. And then I really thought about it. And yeah. when I heard this song, I went, I've got to play the, the best I can possibly play this. And so the second half that was handed off from that. I went, I've just got, and I was inspired, and I, I don't use that lightly. I was inspired to, to do that, and I just did as much thinking as I could about it, but the joke was, <laughs> at that high note. I wanted to go to a major seventh. I wanted to just go a half step lower than the da. And you know, because you know, I was kind of hip, and Martha, they gently suggested I just take it all the way up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and well, the joke was, I was flat. <laughs> so they had they had to bump it up with a harmonizer. Oh, <laughs> really? It's just like, like a, you know, eighth of a tone flat. My ideas have always been ahead of my technique. <laughs> I guess in whatever music I've done in my life, you know, my contribution, my stain on the sheet of rock is, <laughs> I think it's eight bars of alto sax solo on that song. Yeah. If, what, if I'm remembering, oh, yeah. it'll be for that. Yeah. So like I said, this band disappeared for over 20 years. I think this is mostly due to the change in music. Although Martha's music certainly could have fit right in with the dark and methodical realness of the grunge era. But radio, you know, it seems like they'd moved on. Now Martha released a few solo albums that were really good, but largely ignored, like I said, by the tastemakers. But you know what, the band came back with some new faces in the lineup in 2007. They dropped the album Clean, Modern, and Reasonable, which contained acoustic versions of their hits and some of her solo material, including a new recording of Suddenly Last Summer. It's very stark. And then they came back with a really great uh, late-era album with The Last Few Beautiful Days. That came out uh, 2018. This is uh, a great modern take on their classic sound, including the haunting title track. I'm going to link to it below. Enjoy the last few beautiful days. This is a band worth a true deep dive. Suddenly Last Summer is a number one classic from the 80s that deserves a permanent place in your playlist or your vinyl collection. I'm telling you, these guys have great stuff. 
Make sure to leave us a comment about this amazing band. What are your memories of the motels and their music and this song? If you haven't heard them, check them out. They're pure new wave 80s nostalgia. Uh, leave us a comment below. Let's have a great discussion. If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe below. We'd love to have you as part of our permanent content here uh, or as a permanent member of, of our, our channel. Excuse me. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Talk to you soon.